right, let's go ahead and cover a topic of doing custom tool tips using scenes. Okay, so I know we've done a custom tool tip before and that was a bigger focus on the BB code portion, but you could easily set this to uh, use a scene, which we briefly went over in that video, but I'm going to show you a little more, I guess, practical uh, with this. So for example, let's say this is an item in my inventory and I hover over it. It's going to provide us information like the name of the item, the rarity, a description, and an enhancement that it may have. Now, if we, for example, have no enhancement on it, then I want to completely remove that item uh, from being shown. Or not the item, but out of the tooltip. You see here with enhancement set to none, we take a look and we don't even get the slot telling us about enhancements. All right, so we're gonna take a look at doing things like that. And it's actually gonna be quite simple for us. Not too much, as, as long as you know how to uh, get a node and, and set variables, you should have everything you need to know in order to set this up. All right, let me just go ahead and delete my code real quick. Since you guys like seeing me go line by line doing this live with you. All right, so my setup with this is I've got a global script just set up just so I can have my enhancements and rarity set somewhere. This might be in, in a global or an auto load or singleton, whatever word you want to use here. Uh, you might have it set up there. You might have it as part of your actual cl uh, class for your equipment itself. Doesn't matter. The only thing that matter that changes with that is how you access it, right? So global dot rarity global dot enhancement versus maybe just accessing um, that it has to be an enhancement type or rarity type. All right. So that's not too important. I just chose to put it in global here, just to kind of get out of the way, just in case. If it is in something like a class, you're not going to really need to see it anyway. That's probably already set up for you. And then I have my my equipment tooltip scene, and that just has a couple uh, exports here, just so I can get a hold of that. So if I go over to my nameplate scene, I go in 2D. That is just a UV box, and then it has a couple H boxes inside of it that give me an icon and some text. Now you can put as many as many things in here side by side, whatever as you want. Um, that's perfectly fine. Now, how you want to set this up is up to you. Again, as long as you know how to get nodes in your scene, then the, the setup that you have here shouldn't matter as long as it's set to your preference. Now, for the actual scene here where we're going to have our tooltip. Now, I'm just using a texture button. You could have a sprite. You could have a, a grid container. I mean, really anything. Any of these control items are going to have a tooltip of some sort that you could use. So really it doesn't matter what we're using. I'm just using a texture button and I threw the good old icon in there for normal and hovered so it doesn't disappear. All right. Now for the actual code, we can go ahead and jump in. All right. My global just has my enhancements and rarity enums. The tooltip just has a couple Export of variables that I have assigned. So I'm going to go back to the VBox for a moment. Assigned to each of my HBox containers here. Then they're split into separate slots. And then my actual texture button that's going to have the tooltip has an item name set. It's got a description set. And note we can use um, line breaks in these. And then I have an item enhance enhancement, which of course cover for my global enhancements. And that's got one set to it. In this case, it is set to none. And then the same thing, it's got a rarity set and it's set to a rare item. Now, how do we actually make the tooltip? Well, the way for us to do this is there's an actual built-in function for this. So we go func underscore make, and you'll see there's only one thing that pops up and it's going to make custom tooltip. Hit enter, fill that in. And we could put an underscore here before this variable because we're not going to use it. And if we don't put that, we are going to get a warning in the debugger. 
All right, so I'll drop down and this is giving us an error because we have to return an object of some sort, which we will, of course. So to do the basic minimum that we need here, I'm gonna go var tooltip scene. This is gonna be a packed scene. And I'm just gonna go ahead and load and bring in my equipment tooltips scene, right? The V-Box that I showed you. All right, now we need the actual tooltip to be in our scene, right? So we need to create an instance of it. So var tool tip. This is for me, it's a V box. For you, it might be something else. I'm going to go ahead. And if you're confused what that something else is, again, so my tool tip scene here, my root here is a V box. That's where I'm getting it. Um, so that's going to be my tool tip scene dot instantiate. And we still have an error because we do need to return an object. So we're just going to do return tooltip. And that's it. So if we run this, we've got the wrong scene selected. Let's try that again. If we run this and hover my mouse over, I should at least see my uh, tooltip. And you see that's got a dark background, even though I didn't put it in there because that's part of the theme of tooltips. And if you want to see a little more on how to customize those you can check out the custom bb code tooltip video that i've done on the channel already we go into more customizing the tooltips there but all right so we can see everything's here we just need to actually get our information passed into our tooltip into our scene all right so let's stop that and we're going to return of course at the end so what we need to do here is we need to actually get our objects. So remember we made those variables, right? Our name block, description block, enhancement block, and rarity block. These are just my HBox containers. And inside of those, I have um, a texture rect for an icon and I have uh, a label so I can have some text. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna say, get around my tooltip, get the name block property that I created on it. I'm going to get child index one, which is going to be my label. I'm going to get the text property on that, and I'm going to set it to whatever my item name, in, name is, which is breastplate. And we know that's going to change because the default here uh, in it, we look at the scene, is helmet. So if it's working, we should see breastplate. And it is. There we go. All right. So far, so good. Next up, we want to do the description block. So we'll do the exact same thing that we did previously, tooltip dot description block dot, and let's get the child, right? So you notice I'm, all I'm doing is getting the path towards my label and setting the text of it. So that's going to be set to my item description and we can test that again, right? And we see the description has changed. This is the breastplate forged in the fires of Mount Doom. All right. So we have two of our items in there. All we need now is our rarity and enhancement. So let's go ahead with our rarity first. All right, now here's the thing. We're gonna come in and we're gonna get our tooltip dot rarity block dot get child. Again, my labels is child one or child index one dot text. And we're gonna set it to something. To make it clear, I'm gonna say rarity colon space exit out of my string and say plus and we want to put a string now we can go ahead str because we need to convert it what we have into a string now if we were to grab our rarity itself right item rarity and just pass that in as a string we can take a look at it and that might be your first instinct and we take a look and we see it just says rarity three well that's fine but that's not that doesn't help our user so much unless they're going off of these numbers and the user already knows which direction these numbers are going and even then it's for the most part you want the actual text right uncommon common epic rare legendary so we need to actually can uh, use that or turn that into a text and the way that we get that is we're going to do global dot 
in my case, right? And I'm going to get rarity. So I'm getting the enum itself. I'm going to do dot keys. And that's going to give me an array of all of my different rarities. I'm going to do a pair of square brackets and I'm going to pass in item rarity. So remember item rarity is going to be a number. We saw it there as a number three. So we're going to get the third key in our list of rarities. And then get all that's converted to a string. We take a look. Now it says rarity is rare. All right. So we have the name for breastplate. We have the rarity set and shown. We have our description being shown. Now let's look at the enhancement. Well, I just uh, back this up here. The item enhancement is actually going to be uh, exactly the same. Now you'll notice. I don't have it running. Uh, so just give me a moment. But you notice uh, rare is in all caps. So if you do want to change that, you could just add on right to the end after the uh, after the closing parentheses dot uh, capitalize. Why? It. There we go. Dot capitalize. Uh, and if you were to run that now, you'll notice that only the first character is capital. So if you want to have that, you just got to call dot capitalize on it. And we're going to do the exact same thing with our enhancements, right? We're going to get the enhancement block, get child, get my label, set the text, enhancement colon space, and a string of our enhancements dot keys, and then pass in the enhancement that we have. And I'm calling capitalize on it. If we take a look, we can see we have none. Fantastic, that makes sense. If we scroll up uh, to our variables, we see we do have none. Now, the issue that we have here is if we have none, maybe we don't want to even show the enhancement. Right? So what we can do here is we can actually just run an if check. So we can say if item enhancement is equal to zero, right? If I, if I go to my enhancement, zero is set to none, right? The first item here. So if it's zero or none, if there's no enhancement, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab my, whoops, grab my tooltip. I'm going to grab my enhancement block and I'm just going to call hide. And since we have to return an object in all outcomes, now it doesn't show an error here, but if we run it, we we'll surely run into one. Especially, well, I mean, we probably wouldn't. It would come in here, it would hide it, and then we'd pull out, and it would set the text, which would be pointless, and then return it. Um, so instead of wasting those extra resources and time, what I'm going to do here is, if the enhancement is zero and we have none, we're going to hide the entire enhancement hbox block that I'm using and then I'll just exit early and return the tooltip. All right so now with none selected we take a look and that block is completely hidden we just have the name rarity and description and if we were to go into our enhancements here and change this maybe to a protection enchantment or enhancement whatever right and we run that we can see then it does show up so it's only going to show up if we have one set to it now like i said it doesn't really matter if we have these side by side right if you have the description uh inside of the h block beside the breastplate right beside the name or if you have the rarity beside it whatever it doesn't matter as long as you know how to um work through your scene tree to actually get uh, the proper note that you want to hide or change the text of or whatever there is that you want to do. All right. Hopefully that shows you guys some a practical use that you can uh, do with these custom tooltips. Hopefully that was easy enough to understand. And if you have any questions, again, you can always leave them down below. And I'll answer them whenever I end up seeing them. <laughs> and with that, take care. I'll see you guys next week.